Good morning on this Saturday morning, and I trust you're all keeping safe. Let us begin our worship. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 4. O Philip preaches in Samaria. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds with one accord listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud shrieks came out of many who were possessed. And many others who were paralysed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. Now, a certain man named Simon had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he was someone great. All of them, from the least to the greatest, listened to him, eagerly saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. And they listened eagerly to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, who was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptised, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed after being baptised. He stayed constantly with Philip and was amazed when he saw the signs and great miracles that took place. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gift with money. You have no part or share in this for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgive, forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and the chains of wickedness. Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. Now, after Peter and John had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news to many villages of the Samaritans. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, once again, we heard this, this morning's reading about the marvellous acts of the apostles. It's amazing how these early disciples courageously went about the countryside preaching the good news and doing such wondrous works, healing the sick and inspiring others to follow the way. Now, this made me start thinking about a poem I recently read. It was written by Malcolm Guite and it's called The Quarantine Quatrains, a new rabbiet. Malcolm wrote it as a response to his experiences with the pandemic and is a mirror of the emotions found in the medieval Persian reflection on life's joys and sorrows, the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. 
Malcolm has published this poem with illustrations that have been produced by the artist Roger Wagner. But unfortunately, I believe it has been published as a limited edition of only 600 copies. And as my copy is numbered 518, I suspect copies could be hard to obtain. In his Rabayat, the poem reflects upon many of the experiences we had during the pandemic. Many of us suddenly having time, no longer the rush and hurry of the busy day. The respecting of the lockdown rules and the different ways we found to occupy ourselves. Malcolm takes us on a journey through French, Spanish and German vineyards. He participates in a Zoom call seeing the squares upon the screen. He observes the wonders of nature in his garden. He recalls the quiet empty streets without the roar of rush hour traffic and how nature is given a chance to recover from the normal over-exploitation of industry. Finally, it reminds us of the self-giving work and sacrifice of the medical and care workers. But throughout this poem, we are reminded of the spiritual side of God's help and work, the work of Christ who suffers with us. And I'm now going to just read the last verses. O Christ who suffers with us, hold us close, deep in the secret garden of the rose. Raise over us the banner of your love, and raise us up beyond our last repose. Well, I've now read these 40 verses three times, and each reading gives me a different perspective on my experience during the lockdown. I think that Malcolm is doing a wonderful job here as a disciple, as a person who is presenting the gospel, presenting the way in a different way, in, a, in an extraordinarily interesting way, in an inspiring way that will lead to many of us wanting to inquire and find out more about the Christian way. So if you can get a copy, I strongly recommend it to you. The Quarantine Quatrains, a new rubaiyat by Malcolm Guide. Amen. So let us pray. Loving Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for all the privileges and gifts that we enjoy, and we ask that you make us ever mindful of those less fortunate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give you thanks for the relaxing of the constraints imposed because of the pandemic, and look forward to returning to normality in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving Father, we pray for all who have recently died, and those loved ones still at the forefront of our memories. We pray that they are in your heavenly embrace and are at peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving Father, we pray for peace in your world, that harmony may be found through compromise, wisdom, and unselfish negotiations rather than through conflict and suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving Father, we give you thanks for all that you do for us and for letting us serve you in your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And I now invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we come to the conclusion, and we'll give you God's blessing. The Lord bless you, and preserve you from all evil, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep safe and God bless.